All right, let's all stand together. to Jesus for the cleansing power. Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood? Groom cometh, will your robes be white, pure and white in the blood of the Lamb? Will your soul be ready for the mansion bride and be washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Aside the garments that are stained with sin and be washed in the blood of the Lamb. There's a fountain flowing for the soul unclean. Oh, be washed in the blood of the Lamb. Are you washed in the blood, in the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood? Savior's side. Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Do you rest each moment in the crucified? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul, cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood? Ask our ushers to come forward at this time to receive this evening's offering. Brother Gary Wilson, we come ask the blessing over the offering. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father in heaven, as we come before you, Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to come this evening and worship you. God, we pray that you knit our hearts and minds together and that we've come for one reason, and that's to worship you. Touch your pastor as he stands to break the bread of life, put fire in his bones, fire upon his lips. God, I pray, Heavenly Father, prepare our hearts to receive the word. And God, that we'd act on the word, that we'd be doers of the word, not hearers only. God, we pray for that one lost and undone without you that might be in our midst this evening. God, we pray the Holy Ghost, the Lord, would grip their hearts as the word of God's being preached. And we ask you, Lord Jesus, now, bless the offering, use it for that bill of thy kingdom. We'll thank you and praise you in Christ's name.
but to sin and things that confound not of this world shall turn me around daily i'm working i'm praying to in glory to god i am going through he said seated. Good to be in the house of the Lord this evening. Glad you saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. Say amen. Good to be here tonight and so thankful for the many blessings that God has given each and every one of us and we want to take time to pray for the service tonight but also for those that are that are battling sickness. No brother Jimmy's been battling sickness all all week and uh, hadn't been out of the bed till yesterday all week battling. Also a good friend of ours Odell Plot. Many of you know him. He usually sits when he comes up in the balcony. Brother Odell's been uh, really bad sick with pneumonia and uh, He's really battled for his life this week. And um, we really need to pray that God will touch him. He was getting some better. His breathing was getting better. And uh, he contracted a, another kind of pneumonia. But I did get, get another message that he was doing better. So let's, that he was moving. His eyes opened up. So let's really pray that God will touch him, bring him out of this. Ed Motes will be having surgery tomorrow in Asheville, North Carolina at the VA hospital and also dad will be having surgery tomorrow at the VA. Ed's got to have some heart surgery done got to get some blood flow in his feet that's killing him and dad's got two hernias he's getting fixed. So let's pray that God will touch them and that the Lord will just help them through this time. Also brother Fred, good to see brother Fred Byers back uh, tonight and he's been battling breathing and uh, just trying to feel better but we, we keep praying, brother. Keep praying that God breathe in your nostrils the, uh, the breath of life. And uh, he did it the first time. He can do it again. Sister, say that again. It's his heart giving him trouble right now. Lungs causing him heart issues now. Well, we know a man who can, don't we? Amen. I had heart surgery and I was nine years old. The doctor never touched me. Amen. Sherry King. Okay. Sherry King, pray for her. She's got a cyst on three vertebrae. Let's pray for her. Sister. Easton's got the stomach virus. We know that nasty stuff's been going around. And pray for little Coulter Benjamin. We had a prayer for him before service back there. And uh, he's sick now. And Crystal had him at the doctor uh, this evening. So let's pray for him. Oh, my goodness. Mr. and Miss Shamlin, that's your principal, right? And his wife, is she te does she teach too? She's an assistant administrator, and he's the principal, and that's over at Mountain Area Christian Academy. And uh, let's pray for them, both of them battling cancer right now. Oh, my. Pray for the children involved in this. God can touch, can he? Amen. He sure can. We've seen him do too much already to know he can't, Brother Paul. and Tim Cox battling cancer. Yes. Yes. Amen. Let's remember them in prayer. Sister Lori, did you get those two names? Keith Lance and Tim Cox. I knew about Tim for a long time but didn't let anybody know. I, they didn't want anybody to know about it. But Sister? Ina, Ina Little, 10 years old, was taken to Northeast Georgia Gainesville hospital with her heart 
heart rate was 160, so let's pray that God will touch her, her tonight. Yes. Okay, I think I got all that. You correct me if I'm wrong, but her friend had stage 3 cancer and was battling that, and he heard about this pill called the frankincense oil pill. Started taking that, and he went back to the doctor, and his cancer was at 0.8 and does not have to have treatment anymore or go back. Amen? Praise the Lord. But Jeff? Brittany's grandmother, Brittany from school, had a heart attack. So let's remember that. God bless you, sweetheart. That's wonderful. Also, let's remember, I, I got news that uh, uh, Brother Lonnie Stockup's fighting, fighting fire right now. Two forest fires in uh, Cherokee County going on right now, and they are really struggling. Brother Ed told us before service so let's pray that God will protect Lonnie and the men that's fighting fires right now while we're in service also the camp meeting and Pigeon Forge going on somebody said is it going good I reckon so I didn't get to go this year I know some of you got to go over but um, the first night of the meeting they had right at, at a thousand people and uh, and I, I heard that that Brian Barron Calvin Ray really preached it out so Let's pray. If they had near a thousand on Monday, I can imagine what it's going to be by tomorrow night. So, uh, anybody else with a prayer request, brother? Oh no! Just remember, R.L. and Peggy Jordan is their daughter. Uh, went out into eternity through a car wreck last night. Anyone else? I get so many requests. I hope I don't leave any out, but it, it's just so hard. And, and uh, I, I'm going to give a praise report tonight. I was going to save it for the message, but um, how many of you know how much we depend on those little things we carry and talk to people all the time? I mean, I'm telling you, if we, if we, hid, the, if we hid the Word of God in our heart like we put the cell phone in our pockets, how much better off we would be? And... I, for some reason, my my phone wasn't text. I had text messages on there that I needed, and I couldn't I couldn't get them get them off there. The whole screen was white, and I was sitting back there in the office, and I said, "Lord, this thing's driving me crazy." And and I said, "But I'm not going to worry about that because I'm I need a message from you. Is what I need. I need to hear from heaven on something." And God began to give me a a nice little sermon that you're going to hear tonight and that happened today and uh, so I'm, I'm thankful for that and so after five hours I just I, I, I just left it alone forgot about it talked with with Apple care three or four times and finally I just said if it doesn't work it doesn't work I don't care it doesn't matter and uh, I come back to church this evening sister Betty came in she had a bag she said I got an extra phone right here for you and I said well you know I said when I got back I went back and I hadn't even thought about that phone a bit. And I went back there and clicked the button and it's working like a brand new one all of a sudden. And they, they couldn't eat. Listen, I had them so baffled with what was going on with that phone. The technicians, they didn't know what was wrong with it. And they said, we've never experienced this before like this. But you know what I think that was? And I hope God gives me a message on this. It, it's a diversion it's what it is that's what the devil tries to do he tries to divert you off your path tries to get your eyes on little frivolous things that doesn't mean anything if I need a new phone I go get another one it doesn't matter and but you know it's frustrating at times but if we allow little things like that you know Solomon put it best when he said in the book of Proverbs when he said the little foxes do what spoil the vine the little things in life will get in will chew the root system from your grapevine and all of a sudden you're not bearing any fruit anymore I don't want something little to rob me of the fruit of the Spirit of God in my life I don't want that 
And so, and if you'll remember on Sunday, I said every time we were tempted or we go through a trial, that's, that's just an opportunity for us to grow closer to the Lord, for us to step up a little higher in the Spirit. So all that has unspoken requests tonight, lift your hand. Unsp- How many of you just want to throw your hand up and praise Him for something He's done for you? Can you say hallelujah? Just say thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Let's get up all that will come and gather in the altar tonight and and pray. Call upon the name of the Lord Jesus this evening. Good to have our friend Jim McCarroll with us tonight. I'm going to ask him if he would lead us all in prayer, and then we've got something special for you. Let's pray for Brother Charles' granddaughter and the band from over in Union County heading to New York so let's pray for them brother Jim would you lead us in prayer at this time oh Jesus we love you God we thank you oh father we praise you God move about all these people that are here oh Jesus oh father we praise you God we ask you Jesus Lord that you touch these that's gathered in here Lord from one side got a special guest with us tonight It's going to be doing a couple of songs for us and, and I hope she'll ter- share part of her testimony as well tonight and we're so thankful for her uh, being here we've got to be in service together several times and um, she's just got the anointing of the Lord upon her and I want you to give a First Free Will Baptist Church welcome to Sister Connie Clark tonight I 
uh, thank you for letting me come. Um, this is exciting. I've actually never been here before, but I have gotten to sing when he preached, and, and y'all are blessed to have a great pastor. And um, anyway, the first song I'm going to sing tonight, it's, it's called Even So Come, and you probably hear it on the radio, but um, I laid in bed one night, and I said, um, Lord, what is even so come? You know, what does that mean exactly, even so come? And um, so I did what normal people do, get on Google and, you know, Google even so come. It's actually the second to the last scripture in, in the Bible, in Revelation. It says, even so come, Lord Jesus, come. And I laid there and I thought about it. And then I thought about how anxiously awaiting that I am for, for the Lord's coming. Because he is coming soon. And um, he's coming, re and, and then it said, um, nevertheless, is what it, what it meant. Um, even so come, nevertheless, even though. And so I thought to myself, he's coming whether I've finished college. He's coming whether you've built that house that you're building, or you have had a baby, or any, any plans that you have in life, he's still coming whether you get to do that or not. And if you are not anxiously awaiting his coming, then, you know, you need to make some changes in your life. So this song is for, for you tonight. I felt led to sing it. Little All of creation, all of the earth, make straight a highway, a path for the Lord. Jesus is coming soon. Call back the sinner, wake up the saints, let every nation shout out your name. Jesus is coming. Like a bride waiting for her groom will be a church ready for you Every heart longing for our King We sing even so come Lord Jesus come Even so come Lord Jesus There will be justice, all will be new, your name forever, faithful and true. Jesus is coming soon. Like a bride waiting for her groom, we'll be a church ready for you. Jesus come even so come Lord Jesus come so we wait we wait for you God we wait your come So we wait, we wait for you, God, we wait, you're coming soon, like a bride waiting for her groom, we'll be a church ready for you. So come, 
Lord Jesus, come. Even so, come, Lord Jesus, come. Like a bride waiting for her groom, we'll be a church ready for you. tell you a little bit about me um my name's connie and i said that already but uh i get a little nervous <laughs> uh, i usually share my testimony at the crusades and um uh well it was um 2007 i was picked up off the streets um by the cops and taken to a, a rehab i was um I've been uh, on meth for uh, 16 years. I've been clean for nine years in June. <laughs> and, um, and, and that is a miracle because I remember sitting in a closet one night and saying, God, either take this from me or take my life because I can't do this without you. And so... I was living in fear, fear of change, fear of, um, fear of what people would think of me at, because I had, you know, pretty much ruined my life. And um, this next song, uh, it talks about fear, and um, it's called No Longer Slaves. You unravel me with a melody You surround me with a song Of deliverance from my enemies Till all my fears are gone I'm no longer a slave For I am a child of God I'm no longer a slave to fear For I am a child of God From my mother's womb Hold on, not yet <laughs> From my mother's womb, you have chosen me. Love has called my name. I've been born again into your family. Your blood runs through my veins. And I'm no longer For I am a child of God I'm no longer a slave to fear For I am a child of God I'm no longer a slave to fear For I am a child 
of gods. I'm no longer a slave to fear, for I am a child of God. Father, and I am surrounded by songs of deliverance. We've been liberated from our bondage. We sons and the daughters and let us sing our freedom Sister Connie, a hand clap of praise. Love you, sister. God bless you. Oh, come on, church. That wasn't good enough. My goodness. I've seen y'all act worse than that at T-ball games. Come on. Ain't God good? Praise the Lord. He delivers us. He delivers us from the enemy. Just remain standing. Genesis chapter 14. Some of you probably had a hunch I'd be back over here in the 14th chapter, but I didn't. I mentioned it on Sunday morning. And listen, I want to tell you, on Sunday, the past few weeks around here have been unreal. And this Sunday was like, I mean, God just sitting in here with us. And when when. When I finished that message, <clears throat> and, and I happened to just get on chapter 14 just a minute, and while I was looking through that, I thought, oh, what a message. And I thought, I'll preach that tonight. And then the Lord gave the other one. <laughs> How to tell the church is alive. Births, baptisms, and blessings. Right? You can remember that. And we're in a place, and it all went back to that one name. How many remember that one name? What was it? 
Jesus. Jesus, his blood flowing through the church. It's alive. It's pumping. The heart of the church means that we are we're trusting in the blood of Jesus Christ. Now, before I get into this message tonight, I do want to say this. That the blood of Jesus Christ is the only way that we can be born again. Okay? Remember that. Remember that. I'm going to read Genesis chapter 14, starting in verse 13. And, and you pray that God bless us just a few minutes. And again, didn't you enjoy that singing by Sister Connie? Love you, sister. And is that your mother with you? Oh, Mom, ain't you proud? I'm telling you, God's blessed you. Verse 13, And there came one that had escaped and told Abram, the Hebrew, for he dwelt in the plain of Mamre, the Amorite, brother of Eskol, and brother of Aner, and these were confederate with Abram. And when Abram heard that his brother was taken captive, he armed his trained servants. Now, if you've got a pen, a highlighter, or something, there's certain things you just want to mark over. You want to make sure that you mark that because you want to go back to it again. And, and the part that I like about this, he armed his trained servants. But then you get to the next word, born in his own house, 318 and pursued them unto Dan. Now, I've been to Dan three different times, and when I see Dan, and some of you folks that's been with me in Israel, you know Dan, when you go to Dan, it's like being on Fires Creek. Literally, that, that's what it looks like in the northern part of Israel, up, up near Dan. You can look across the border, and when you get up in Dan, you can look across and you can see Hezbollah. Right on the hill. They've got a big old gun pointed right at you. You go just a little ways north of to Damascus over, and you know your geography. You probably know it better than me, and I've been there. And listen to what happens now. And he divided himself against them, and his servants by night, and smoke. Hey, aren't you glad that God's people work by night too? Praise the Lord. The devil does a lot of things in the dark, but God's people can fight in the dark. And, and, and the Bible says, and his servants by night, and smote them and pursued them unto Hobah, which is on the left hand of Damascus. So not only, I mean, they're, they're right on the border of Syria there, and they are slaying the enemy. And the Bible says, and he brought back, Look to your neighbor and say, brought back. Brought back some of the goods. Is that what your Bible says? If it is, throw it in a trash can on the way out. All right? All, all the goods and also brought again his brother Lot. Now, does that throw you a curve? How many of you believe that Lot was Abram's brother? Raise your hand. Well, the Bible, Bible says it. How many of you believe that he, Lot was Abram's nephew? Raise your hand. Y'all scared to death. Come on, be honest. This ain't no test. <laughs> we get over and over. And, and, and later on, and, and we find out that, and, 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 and Lot, let, let me explain this to you. Because there is absolutely no contradictions in the Bible. Okay? So, how many of you believe that Lot was really the nephew of Abram? All right? Anybody believe that he was the brother? Anybody? Now, we can prove by Scripture, J.D. does. If you, if you really want to know how it happens, it's not, because they're, it's not because they're believers now. Let's rule that out. That's not it. So how many of you still believe that Lot was his brother? Just because there's a reason for it, you go to the 11th chapter, and you'll find out that what happened is Haran, the father of Lot, died, and Terah, listen, adoption goes away back. He adopted him into his family, and therefore he grew up in the home, and he was really Abram's nephew, Abraham's nephew, but he was also called his brother here because he was adopted in. His, his daddy took 
him in as his son because Haran went on out into eternity. He died. And see, that, that's why the, you're not going to find a contradiction in the Word of God. You ain't going to find it. But a lot of people would say, that's not right. Now, how many of you didn't know that? Just raise your hand and be honest. I taught you something tonight. I didn't know it either this morning, okay? Does that make you feel better? I studied, I studied that to get the point. And I thought about my, 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 dad, my dad didn't have a, have, have a dad. And, and Joe, Joe, my uncle back there, didn't have a dad. But what they did, they called their grandpa daddy. Right? So, so you understand, see, Scripture's always going to back everything up. When you dig deep enough, you'll find out what it's saying. Now, I know you've been standing a while. Just stand one more second. And he brought back all the goods and also brought again his brother Lot and his goods. But brought, brought his brother back and his brother's goods. That's pretty good, isn't it? And all the goods, the Bible said, and the women also, they're important. Can I get a witness, men? Yes. And the people. Well, who's the people? Is women not people? Was Lot not people? He brought back all the people. He's saying, I brought back the non-family members. I brought them all back. The children, the other men. We brought everybody back. Now notice, was there anything left there? I don't see a thing left. And for time's sake, I'm going to stop reading right there. But you keep your Bible open right there tonight. And I want to preach to you, bringing back, taking back rather, taking back the precious things. Kind Jesus, we love you. God, thank you for the reading of your word. Thank you for the wonderful singing. Now bless the reading of your word. Bless your, your preacher tonight as I stand. And we'll praise you. And above all, Lord, in any class tonight, Lord, that's going on, Lord, any other adult class, Lord, teenagers, youth, God, if there's someone unsaved, may they be saved. And God, to the Christians that's in here, may they march into the enemy's territory tonight and take back those precious things. And we'll praise you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost and all God. God's people said, amen. You can be seated if you can. By way of introduction, taking back the precious things. How many of you, by lifting up your hand, would say, I'm going to be honest tonight, and I am just going to be totally blatantly honest in front of God and everybody. There have been some precious things in my life that I once had that I don't have anymore, and I'd like to have it back. Yes, every single person under the sound of my voice can say, I'd like to have that back. Whether it was your virginity and you gave it up and you, you, you were wrong and, and you, gave that, you gave up your purity and, and, and maybe it was, it was a, a relationship that you had and, 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 and it wasn't your fault maybe. Maybe you didn't have no control over it, but, but it went south and you tried. But because of that relationship's gone, that precious relationship's gone, but now there's other things being affected by that. The mental state, the, 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 the emotional state of your mind has robbed you of the precious peace that you once had in your life. Maybe you lost someone dear to you, a family member, and, and, and you missed that 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 camaraderie you missed that love that you shared and that that closeness of relationship and it, and they they've gone out into eternity and you you feel alone you, it could have been a son or a daughter a grandchild a father mother a family another family member and you miss that and and you want that 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 peace back you just can't seem to find it you've prayed time and time again but it seems like the enemy came into your camp and took from you and there and now you're wondering how am I going to get this back how am I going to get my peace back how am I going to get my 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 financial stability back how am I going to going to get my my joy back Anybody ever lost some joy on this journey? Boy, I'm telling you, there's been some joy dropped off by the way because of the battles. And friend, we are going to battle in this world. You cannot live in this world and be a Christian and not battle. I stood in the hallway today in my office and took him back in my office and spoke with him a few minutes on Nate Rogers. And Nate is in 
early college down at Tri-County and he, he went to Hayesville High School and then he started going down there and, and some girl told him, said, well, I, I'm really, I'm a girl, but really I was, I'm, I'm really a boy. And, and he said, listen, honey, that ain't right. God's not for that. And God is not happy with that type of thinking. That's of the devil. And, and you need to trust in the Lord and he'll save you and help you. And all of a sudden he started getting text messages and emails and, and bad messages threatening him and telling him he wasn't nothing but a closed minded bigot and, and this that and the other and I said it Sunday morning I can't understand why that the liberal side can't open their mind when it comes to biblical way of thinking why, why can't they open up and say, you know what, maybe I ought to just listen a while and listen to what God's Word says because I'm going to tell you something. I, I'm going to say it every service I get a chance to if I think of it. Listen, if you don't like your life, and you don't like the way things have gone and, and you, you just don't feel like you're the person that, that you ought to be and listen you can try drugs right you can try you can try drinking you can try relationships and adultery and fornication and you can try homosexuality and you can try all of these things you can try prostitution and everything else to try to try to get your fix in life but I'm telling you something the real fix is going to happen like what the word of God says here whenever Abram when he went into his house and he got those that were born in his own house so if you don't like your life get born again just get a brand new life and when you get a brand new life he'll give you brand new eyes to look through he'll give you a brand new heartbeat he'll give you a brand new mind to think with everything about you will be brand new in Jesus Christ second Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17 says uh, old things have passed away behold all things uh, have become new I'm glad all things are new in my life because of Jesus Christ he's the way he's the truth he's the life amen get born in the right house get born get born in, in, in the house of God of the house of God you don't have to be in the house of God. I got saved at home, and I found out he's just as real at home as he is down at the church house. He's just as real at Walmart as he is at the dollar store. Amen. Thank God Walmart says they'll roll it back. He'll roll back your sin, and he'll wash them away too. Amen. I'm telling you tonight, what, what's got to happen if we want this life, if we want to be able to do what God's called us to do and be what God has called us to be, and I want to tell you something, everybody that's alive on this planet called earth right now, they want a purpose. They, they want something to do. They, and you know what? Too many of them are, 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 are looking for love in all the wrong places. <laughs> I mean, they're looking for life in all the wrong places. That some are looking to education to try to try to get them, and some are looking to science, and some are looking for this and that. But listen, the only way, Brother Rob, that we're going to be able to see clearly is to see who we are, to see what we have done to the Lord Jesus Christ, to realize that it's our sin, and when we see that, we'll want to do something about it. Now, see, Abram, there was the Battle of the Kings, and. It took me about 10 weeks to figure out how to say this, but Kedor Laomer, king of Elam, he, he was kind of like the head man. He had three other kings with him, and, 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 and they had made an, an, an alliance together, and they began to rob Lot and, and all of Abram's family here. And what happened, Abram went after them. Now listen, listen. If we're going to take back the precious things that God has given us, the first thing you have to be is born again. You got to be born of the right house. You got to be in the right family. Ephesians chapter 3 says the family of God. We've got to be part of the family of God. Now once just because we're saved and just because we're born again, does that mean that we will not have battles? No. No. Men, some of you men's going to battle pornography. Some of you ladies are going to battle pornography. Some of you, and some of you, it might not be you, it might be your children. There's going to be generational curses that you're going to battle. 
There's going to be, there's going to be adultery that, that runs through the family line. It's going to try to leak in down through the seed. And somebody has got to stand up in the family and say, I'm going to put a stop to this. Addiction is going to run in some of our families, if not all of our families. There's some addiction somewhere that's going to try to get through a seed and try to be passed on down. But aren't you glad there's another seed? Aren't you glad that there, there's a righteous seed? Aren't you glad that Jesus came and when he gets in us and when the seed of the gospel gets in us, then we can pass down that seed. And I'm glad Jesus' seed trumps any other seed. Amen. I'm glad righteous seed overrides unrighteousness. See, the world and the enemy wants us to think that they are stronger. Darkness is stronger than light. But I want to tell you something. The light of God shines brightest in the darkest world, in the darkest moment, in the darkest valley, in the darkest trial. We that have the oil of glory living down in these vessels, God starts to spark at salvation and we, we begin to burn for the Lord in the darkness of this world and everyone living in darkness of the darkness might not recognize darkness but darkness always recognizes the light you better believe it John chapter 1 and the light shined in darkness being Jesus in darkness comprehended it not the Jews the religion did not comprehend that but I'm glad now he said ye shall be the light of the world you're the salt of the earth and he said be like a city on a hill which can't be hid I don't want to hide the love of God in my life I want him to stick out in my life I like that story where that little boy said daddy how tall was Jesus he said he was probably six foot tall and he said well Jesus I'm only four foot tall if Jesus lives in me he's going to stick out listen you can't take somebody so big as God and put him down in a mortal man and him not shining everything that we do somebody shout hallelujah right there listen I'm telling you he's going to shine in your life it might be just your, your motherly skills and when you put your arms around your children, they're going to feel that love, that God's love. They're going to feel it. It might be that, Dad, that you take your son fishing and, and, and you spend time with him. He's going to feel that, that love from, from God. After you've been transformed, he's going to feel that. It might be that student that you're teaching. It might be that neighbor that's watching you and wondering, scratching their head, what's got into them? They're going to see the light of God shine in you. You got to be born in the right house. Now pay close attention. I've already preached more on the beginning than I thought I would, so I'm going to run through this quick. But the f- number point number one: those that's been saved and born again, they've got to be trained. They've got to be trained. That's why we, we just don't have one class. We've got other classes in, in the church for, for people to go to. We've got different Sunday schools and, and, and people's learning on different things and, and, and uh, teaching on different things and people are learning on different levels. And, and so we teach the Word of God to them. And, and, and we don't teach our doctrine. No, we teach the doctrine of the Word of God. That's the only thing that's going to help this world. We're going to teach everything from the Word of God, season with the Holy Ghost and, and, and preach in the same way but we're training something but listen you're going to train for so long I'll never forget that my, my cousin Timmy he went to college that didn't work out and he decided to go in the military he went in the Marines when he went in the Marines man he'd tell me how rough it was Jim you know all about that don't you what is it? Paris Island? Paris Island, one of the scariest places on, the, on earth for some people. And they go there. And matter of fact, Jim's wife, Judy, went there as well. And they go through vigorous training. And I mean, they begin to just, just pound into them military training and how they need to be obedient. I mean, they're just pounding into them, pounding into them. And I mean, they talk to them like they're dogs, bad dogs. I mean, treat them like they're, they're not human. 
And they do all kinds of uh, physical feats and, and things that, that I'd hate to try to do right now. But what are they doing? They're training them. They're not ready to go to war, but they're training them. There, there comes a day, matter of fact, sometimes they won't even let them shoot real ammunition. They're just going through and they're firing off blanks. But there comes a time when they get the call after they complete their training that there's time that they've got to go to war. And that's where point number one is he armed those that were trained. And bless God, he's arming some people in these last days to stand up for what is right like little young Nate standing up. He's arming us with the word of God. I can't help but go to Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10 that says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And he said, Put on the whole armor of God. In other words, he's saying this to the church at Ephesus. I've trained you now, but now it's time for you to be armed. I've given you, boy, I feel the Holy Ghost tonight. Listen, I have trained you. I put you through the test and the time that you needed but now I'm going to arm you I'm going to put the sword of the spirit in your hand that you're going to do something with that was not to defend themselves Listen, we can talk about our feet being shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace loins going about with the truth putting on the breastplate of righteousness the helmet of salvation The shield of faith. He said, above all things, take on the shield of faith. Did you get that? That's defense, isn't it? That's defense. But he also said, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And the Word of God is not for defense. I'm not talking about doing this. That's the shield of faith, honey. I'm going to stand. You can try to hit me all you want to, but I'm going to stand. But there comes a time. Boy, I feel the Lord right here. There comes a time when the general that's sitting on the throne of, of God called Jesus at his right hand, and he says, Go fight. And about that time, Abraham had trained them, and now he armed them. Now all those times, matter of fact, I've seen where some used to train back in Bible days with wooden swords, and and they would train, but there came a time when they were given a real sword to go into battle. And when they'd been trained long enough, they got armed, and then they went out. And listen, they were defending themselves with the shield, but they were on the offense with the sword. And so many of God's people are living. Listen, so many Christians today are living under attack when we need to be on the attack in the name of the Lord. So many Christians are running. Somebody stand and tell me one piece of armor that covers the backside of a Christian. One, there's not one article of of armor that covers your back. He give you everything. What does that tell us? Keep your eyes on the enemy. You don't let it. Hey, can I give you something real good? Keep him in the crosshairs. Keep the cross between you and the enemy. Keep him at bay. You keep your eyes on him. Wherever he goes in your life, you keep facing him. And there's going to come a day when Jesus says, go seek him. And that's when you go with bulldog faith, take the sword of the Spirit, and begin to cut that bondage out of our lives. Oh, praise the Lord. He armed those that had been trained. Have you been trained? I'm going to give you one more here. Not only did he arm them, he attacked them. And listen to this. Two things that I notice in this, in the attack. He, he, he pursued them to the very end of the nation of Israel. Isn't that good? You know what he's doing? He's driving out the thieves out of the holy land you know what we ought to do around the church sometime we just ought to get out our bible and walk around here open every door and say every foul spirit that's ever entered into this house get out in the name of Jesus take your sword and slay them out of here not that there's any in. I believe half of them scared to come around. They know they're going to get carved up around here. 
Listen, but they, he, he pursued them. And when he pursued them out to the border, it's almost like Abram said, I'm going to drive you out of the land. But then they, they had to stop, Brother Scotty. You know why? Because then he smote them. Sometimes you take things to church. Oh, I feel preaching. You take things to church. And you take them to church. All those things that, that you're plagued with and, and your mind is battling and, and you're an emotional wreck and you come in and somebody says, how you doing? And you put on that fake grin and look at them and shake their, oh, I'm so blessed. I'm doing good. You're lying. <laughs> You're not doing good. Somebody asked me one day, and God convicted me over that. Coming in, they said, how you doing? I said, I ain't doing any good at all. Sunday morning, they looked at me. <laughs> I said, but I'm hoping here in about 11 o'clock, God's going to do a great work. <laughs> Sometime, matter of fact, and I believe it was that day, I went to the altar as the pastor of the church before I got in the pulpit and I said, and you know what I did? I took all the enemy. Now don't, don't lose me here. I took all the enemy and all those thoughts and all those burdens and I took them to the altar. I took them to the border. But when I got them to the border, it's like God chained them up and said, now cut the heads off. And then just took the word of God and just began to slay those things that were standing between me and the Holy Holy of holies of heaven. Bless God, church, are you getting this tonight? Sometimes you can't take them to the border. You got to slay them and push them over the edge. Hallelujah. Oh, if you'll get a hold of this tonight, you'll leave here shouting. You'll be doing Zorro moves walking out. <laughs> I'm telling you, he pursued them and he smote them. But then I, I want you to, I want you, this like, I got to throw this in. I've really got a lot to say. I'm just trying to hurry. Take them back to precious things. If you're going to get the precious things back, you're going to have to be armed. If you want to take the precious things back, you got to be on the attack. Look to your neighbor and say, I'm on the attack now. Don't that make you feel better? Some of you ain't even got the faith to say it right now. You ain't even got the faith to say it. But, but, but why? Can you turn back a chapter? Turn back to 12. Chapter 12, verse 3. Why did Abram feel like he could do this? I'm going to tell you why. And buddy, it's hit me like a ton of bricks. Why in the world did Abram feel like he could take 318 Men that he had trained, armed them, could have been the first time. And went after four kings and their armies. Does it make any sense? There's a lot of things around here that doesn't make sense. <laughs> but God's in it. Listen, verse 3, And I will bless them that bless thee. I read it Sunday morning in the sermon. I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curseth thee and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. He thought, man, these guys are trying to curse me and my family. God's going to bless me and I'm going to trust him with it and off he went running. He wasn't a young man either, by the way. He went after them. And so that brings me to the third point. Not only if you want the precious things back, will you have to be armed. You'll have to attack if you want them back. Then number three, he acquired the precious things. His brother, his nephew, Lot, same man. You ever had a family member? I know Connie's mom sitting back there. She's right on. She is tuned in right now. Primetime gospel preaching right here. She is tuned in. When you got a loved one out there in sin, and the devil's got them in a prison, they can't get out. 
and the only hope that they have is in your prayers going up and marching after the enemy in faith saying listen nothing hell's not going to stop me I'll march through it in the name of Jesus Jesus already marched through hell himself and took the keys I'm going to go in the name of Jesus I'm going to walk through depression I'm going to walk through anxiety I'm going to walk through cancer I'm going to walk through addiction I'm going to walk through all my troubles and I'm going to get a hold of the Lord and I'm going to take the sword of the spirit and I'm going to cut that hell out of my life and I'm going to return back with all the goods my family members, my wife the women of my family and all the people I'm bringing it all back to the house of God woo y'all ain't feeling this like I am the other day, I sat down there at the ball field, and I was working with the ball, and I, it was them little bitty, and they were running around there, and they could halfway run, and they'd halfway say their words right, and throw a ball to first, and it go to third base. I mean, just going around, but it came down, and little Junior got out there, and he must have bunted one, and it went by, and they threw the ball away, and they went running around in bases, probably missed a couple of them, and that whole side went to screaming and yelling and shouting, and I thought, you know, that kind of sounds like our church services when it really gets good. But I thought how many of them sitting over there that's hooping and a hollering. I mean, them mamas was a jumping up and down and a clapping and a screaming. Woo! And they're doing that. And I thought, how many of them will do that on Sunday? How many of them be willing to get on their face before a holy God and say, I got a daughter. I got a son that needs to be saved. I've got a husband that needs saved. Or a man to get down on his face and shed tears at his bedside and say, I got a lost babies out there or a relationship that needs restored and for them to have the faith to march right into the enemy's camp and bless God and take back every 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 precious thing that God has given us it's not the devil's it's ours it belongs to us just get the faith and march in and take it and keep it hallelujah I'm not talking about taking it back to lose it again. I'm talking about you getting it, holding on to it, and say, God, you hold it this time. He'll take care of it. Sometimes our lives get messy. When our lives get messy, when our lives get greasy, we lose things. Kind of like our kitchen. Your kitchen. Sorry, Crystal. She went to wiping down stuff, and she said, I spent all day. Can you believe how dirty that was? I said, yeah. That's how we are. We get busy in life. We get busy with the things that we want to do, and we neglect God's Word. We neglect the house of God. We neglect prayer. And what happens, that grease over time begins to build up on the cabinets. Uh, you know that kind of part when you, if you got a little design around, it goes up to the top, and then it goes in and around, something like that. It's up there on that top little lip that, that you can't see. Oh, you'll shine the front, and it looks good. But get up in a chair and get up there where God's sitting and look down and see what it looks like. Oh, that's good, church. Some of you go home and can't clean your kitchen tonight. Afraid the preacher's going to come over and get in a chair. You know what I'm talking about? Listen, he acquired it all. And the Lord spoke to me and said, When we learn as Christians to trust the Lord and pursue and smite the enemy. Now listen. We'll have bread and we'll be blessed. Do you believe that? The Bible says, verse 18, And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of the Most High God, and he blessed him. <laughs> Anybody been blessed lately? Oh, come on. You got to come to church tonight. You've been blessed. You ain't having to work out of town. Pam, you ain't sitting in a hospital tonight. Thank God. You ain't sitting in a courtroom somewhere, in a jail cell, in a hospital. Bless the Lord. We've been blessed. Hallelujah. 
We've been blessed. You know who's going to give the bread and who's going to give the blessing? Melchizedek, you know who he was, don't you? The king. We're going to be blessed with bread by the king and blessing by the king. I'm trying to quit and can't. I'm going to close anyway. Verse, chapter 15, verse 1. Just too good to leave out. I may preach it again Sunday morning for spite. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram. I am thy shield. <laughs> He's our defense. And thy exceeding great reward. Does that bring to mind a New Testament passage of Scripture to anybody else but me? Those that seek Him diligently will what? Huh? Say it out loud. Say it again. We'll find Him. But we'll also be rewarded. He is a rewarder of them that what? Glory. 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 <laughs> mm. See, when I looked at the word shield, it's translated in other passages as believed. Isn't that good? Believed. So Abram believed God. And according to Romans said, and it was counted unto him righteousness. He believed God. Thus God is the object of Abram's faith and thereby the source of his confidence. The promise of reward is especially significant in the view of the fact that Abram had just refused a reward in between this from the king of Sodom because God himself would be Abram's reward. Take back the precious things. I've got promises. I could really preach right now. I've got promises. I've got promises in my life that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I've got promises. Promises like the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. I've got promises. He said, I'll never leave thee nor forsake thee. I've got promises. I can do all things through Christ that strengtheneth me. I've got promises tonight. I've got promises. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, what I told you, if I go to prepare a place for you, I will go and come again to receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. I've got promises. I'm not giving you the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. I've got promises. Thank God to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. I've got promises. I've got precious things. And bless God, I'm charging the enemy's camp. I'm getting them back. I'm taking it all too. I've got promises for this church. God, give this church promises. You've not seen anything what God's going to do here. I'm telling you. I mean, it, 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 it may try you. you know, it may be some things get uncomfortable for a little while. But bless God, get closer to God. You'll enjoy it. You, you'll enjoy it. I'm looking for holier things. I'm looking for more righteousness. I'm, I'm looking for a greater move of the hand of God on this place. When you get in your mind and I get in my mind, I'm on the attack. Sister Betty went on a cruise. I'll close with this. She went on a cruise and 
when she got on that cruise, she, she told me this before service. It's all I could do to keep from shouting. She said, when I got on that cruise, she said, I went up to this man. I began to tell him about Jesus. And I don't know if he got saved, if he got right, something happened. Something happened to that man. And when, he, when it did, every time, that he saw her on that cruise, he'd just start crying. <laughs> and he, he even come back and said to her, he said, you need to tell your preacher he's got an angel in his church. Hey, that's the power of God. She's shaking her head. Oh, listen, let me make you feel better. God sent angels with you around you everywhere you went. That's what happened. But you know what you're doing? You let that little oil shine, that little light and darkness. And you know what happened at the end of the trip, at the end of the cruise? He came back and said, I just want to tell you, because of what you did to me, I was able to witness to somebody else and tell them about Jesus. What happened? What can you tell me what happened? Yes, I can. She's been trained in this church for a while now. And bless God, when she went on that cruise, God armed her. She started packing heat, amen. She got the fire of God in her hips. Got the fire of God in her heart. And when she got on there, she walked in in the name of the Lord, saw a man that was struggling, ministered unto him, and a little fire got in that fella, and he went and took it to somebody else. So what happened? She was armed. She was on the attack, and she acquired a blessing. What about you tomorrow? What about you tonight? You just going to leave the precious things, let the devil take them, or are you going to go get them? Angie, don't worry about your daughter and that mess. Don't even worry about that. That's the devil. Don't even worry about it. We'll pray for that. We'll pray for that kid at school that's causing trouble. And he'll have to get saved or, 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 or run to the end of the earth. That's what you do. You pray. You pray. You charge hell. You attack. And you'll acquire some things. Did you bow your head to get a song? Oh, what a great service tonight. Somebody's been praying for their preacher. How many of you right now can say, I've got some precious things in the enemy's camp? I've, there's some things the devil's took from me. And I want them back. Can you be honest and just raise your hand? God bless you. 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 Others, just slip your hand. I'm not even going to have you come forward tonight. How many of you? I got precious things the enemy stolen from me. Yes, be honest. God bless you. Well, now, how many of you can say, listen, I'm not saved, preacher. I am not saved. Could you raise your hand? Not going to embarrass you, but you just I'm not saved. Would you pray for me? Is there one anywhere? One anywhere. All Christians. Looks like all of you heaven bound. Now listen, here's what I want us to do right now. I'm going to lead you through a prayer right now. As you bow your heads, I want you to pray this prayer after me. Jesus, this is your child. And I come to the throne of grace boldly. You know what's been troubling me. You know that precious thing. Oh, pray it out loud. You know that precious thing that the enemy has stolen from me. He's come to steal and kill and destroy. But tonight, now let's just all stand up to our feet. But tonight, Jesus, I march into the enemy's camp and I take back those precious things. I take back that peace. I take that joy. I take that happiness. I take that life that I once had 
that was the fullest I receive it back right now I command the enemy to die at the word of God you Jesus came to give life abundant life and eternal life I have my precious back and I'll keep it in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the sweet sweet Holy Ghost and all God's people give him praise amen praise the Lord praise him yeah praise him a little more hallelujah thank you Jesus over the enemy over the devil himself and the world and the devil wants you to think you don't have that power but God has given you that power greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world amen praise Lord give the Lord a real hand clap of praise let's do it amen hallelujah did you enjoy sister Connie Clark tonight did you enjoy that Sister, will you come back for us again sometime? God bless you. Brother Lucas, you got any announcements? Uh, yes, just a few announcements. Right here, the, the practice CD and sheet music for the community youth choir is now available and can be picked up at Benny Sanitation in Hiawassee. This is in regards to the National Day of Prayer in Hiawassee. And they're needing some youth or youth, some youth to come join the youth choir that's going to be led by Ryan and Julie Wilson from North Mount Zion Church of God. So they're excited about all the youth that's going to be participating in, in that event. So if we can send any uh, from here at the church or from the school, we need to let them let them know. The problem is our youth is not in here right now. Um, Let me give you a clue on that. Let me tell you how you work this thing. The school has to take them to that if the FCA requires that. If the FCA in your public school, if you get a hold of their huddle, or get, I'll, I'm going to be on it anyway because I'm the area rep. But if you as a parent call and say, I want my kid and FCA going to that, they'll take them. They took them last year. So I'm sure a lot of the schools are probably where I told the, the National Day of Prayer to make sure they contact them. But Union County ought to be there, Clay County, Towns County, um, Cherokee County ought to be a part of that, that meeting. And also Clay County, and I want to say this tonight, for the National Day of Prayer at, on the square in Hayesville, I need all of you to be there. Take your lunch break, 12 o'clock, go pray that day, because, listen, there's a lot of people that's discouraged about the National Day of Prayer in Hayesville. So make, mark your plans on that night. We'll tell more about it. Coming up, it'll be in two weeks, March 5th. That's on May the May 5th, 5th, and if you're Sorry. going to that in Hiawassee, you need to sign up in the foyer uh, so that we'll know how many tickets that we need to purchase. Um, also, the Tackets is going to be here this coming Sunday, um, and then they'll be singing both in the a.m. and p.m. service. Um, also, youth retreats coming up the end of May. If you uh, would like some more information on that, you can see myself or Bethany Stalkup especially if you want your uh, children to be a part of that. Um, I've also placed out in the foyer uh, sign-up sheets if you want a youth, ret youth retreat T-shirt. So please stop by and sign up and uh, put your name and your shirt size so that we can get those ordered here in the next, in the next few weeks. The last announcement I want, I want to make, um, Lydia McRae is going to be going to Costa Rica on a mission trip yes. and this is coming up May the 8th through the 15th it's a it's a it's a mission trip that's sponsored by their school she's a senior at MACA uh, that's in Morganton and they are just a little bit behind in their fundraising and um, she needs to raise 300 more dollars in order to pay for this trip so Lydia's going to be out in the foyer along with Pam and if you feel led to make a donation to her, uh, to her mission trip, if you can, just stop by and just uh, bless them so that they can go to coast, she can go to Costa Rica and be a blessing to these children that she's going to be ministering to in these orphanages. They're going to be putting on Bible school 
uh, camps that week. So it'll be a great experience. I went on several mission trips when I was young, and it's a great experience uh, for, for Lee. I know she's very excited, but I believe that we can bless her tonight, and we can make up that difference that, they, that she's lacking. Amen. Amen. Folks, you pray for Sunday's services, all right? You pray for them that God will, will bless them and that God will, will speak to me between now and then about what to preach. And also, let's ask people to join us in service on Sunday here at First Free Will, especially those that are lost. I mean, I'm telling you, attendance has been great. But uh, if every one of us brought one person, we'd double attendance next Sunday, okay? It'd be nice to have 1,000 people here every week, wouldn't it? I'm telling you. So let's really be praying that God will bless, and uh, we love you. Let's get our hands right, up in the air. Right quick. Lydia, raise your hand so everybody knows who you are. All right, that's Lydia. That's Lydia. She's going to be out in the foyer. If you, She's a little midget can, back there. If you can help out with that. Also remember our youth barbecue that's coming up the end of April. There's still sign-up sheets out in the foyer, and we need some help working the food, the food uh, trailer. And um, if you can sign up to help with that, please do. It's going to be a Thursday, Friday, and a Saturday. And we need volunteers, especially Thursday and Friday, because that's when our youth is, is still in school. Now, they will be there working, but they, but they do have school, and we'll have to be there for that. Also, if you can sell plates, please, please do that in order to help this sell out. And all the proceeds from that barbecue sale is going to our youth group and their mission trip coming up to Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico, here we come. Let's get our hands in the air. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. May God bless you. Have a good night. Brother Riel.